Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to another Teardown in the Teardown Lab. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about these. When I was a lad, when I were a wee lad, I had one of these with the Famicom disk drive, and I do have the disk drive out back. Um, in fact, I actually have an extra one of these because this was a purchase from a Japanese auction site, Yahoo Auctions, and it turned up quite a while ago. But I could forget about it because I did have quite a lot of other Japanese systems that you've seen in previous videos, like the N64 and GameCube and things. So I just didn't get round to this. And the reason I bought a spare one of these, and this is the memory pack that goes with the disk drive. I think this contains an extra, I'm going to take a guess and then you can correct me, say 64k of RAM, something like that. Um, and it was just part of that disk system. Uh, interesting enough, by the way, do you recognise those types of connector? Yeah, Nintendo used those on later things forever and ever and ever. Amen. Um, the reason I bought that, I thought it might be possible in the future to have a disk drive emulator so you could plug this into a Raspberry Pi. Um, we'll have to look at that at some point in the distant future. I'm going to put this aside though for now. We'll, we'll probably crack the lid on it though. Now, look at the colour of this thing. These were white, um, very much like Snow White. So you can see this one has aged a little bit badly. Um, giving it a sniff. doesn't smell like smoke or anything. It doesn't smell of anything, to be honest. Um, it's just a discoloration. And I really remember these stickers and things like that. So it's even discoloured underneath the sticker. So that's a bit of a killer, isn't it, when you come to Retro Bright It? And I think one of my kids has had a go on that because this actually did have the label fully intact. And you can see here it's slightly... Uh, it's not damaged, I think that's just where the label has been removed and hasn't come off properly, but let's leave that be. I think this is in a, in a very sad condition. If you look hard, you can definitely find them better than this. So let's open it up. I'm sure you've seen my video on the clones. So I have a couple of clones. A, one, a period one, I'd say, from the 1990s and a clone that was more recent, which is the Debenhams type units. If you, if you Google that, well, at back if we show um, Fami clone, you'll definitely get some references to them from the past. And what I found was the clones from the 1990s are actually really well made, believe it or not. They are uh, definitely not as well made as Nintendo's own consoles, but far better than what you get now. I'm pleased to say while I'm doing these screws, the back of this, the condition is really nice. The label looks good, the serial number's untouched, so there is hope yet. You could definitely just change the top cover if you felt like you needed an original looking one. I wonder also if you could find plastics from a family clone that was made well. I suspect the fit won't be quite right. Oh my gosh, look at that. We've got some proper dust from Japan, actual Japanese dust. So we'll keep that aside. That is something special. So the controllers fixed, but you could change them if you get to these headers here. So they're not like permanently soldered to the board like you get in the clones. You have the main board here. This contains the CPU and cartridge slot, of course, and the IO. And then you have this smaller board here which contains the power supply and the video hardware. So that remains pretty much standard across the board. TV game, not sure what that does to be honest with you. RF switch, channel 1, 2. I'm racking my brains here. Uh, channel 1, 2 you could guess could be different switches for the modulator, but TV game? How would your TV know better? Hmm. Answers down below, as per usual. I'm going to go in a little bit further here. We have a rusty screw. It's a little bit worrying, isn't it, when you find a rusty screw on inside something, but it doesn't look like it's too bad. Full of hair, interestingly enough. I can definitely see several pieces of hair. And something I noticed with this, I did try slotting some cartridges into it, and they were really stiff. It was really stiff getting in and stiff on the ejection mechanism. So it's probably worth having a quick look at that as well. Now this screw is proper rusted. That is gonna be a problem for us. 
just to show you, I'm going to zoom in to show you how rusty it is. That is a nice screw. That's how bad it is. So it's, I don't know what what went on, you know, if it was sitting in some water or something, but the damage seems to be pretty much, cons you know, it's, it's just these two parts here. So mm, very weird. Maybe it got f filled with tang or fanta or something and someone shook it out and that just happened to be the last bit where the uh, dampness resided. It doesn't take too long for the corrosion to start. Once it removes the plating on the screws, it will just continue to corrode in air after that point. Okay, last, oh no. It destroyed my driver. <laughs> screws are out, even the rusty one, so that wasn't too bad in the end. Okay, so we'll just lever this lot out watching the light gun cartridge, well, light gun cartridge, yeah, hmm, light gun socket at the front. Um, mm, I'm seeing some heat marks here above the capacitor, that sort of dark area you get from the heat, but that's okay. Let's look here. Apart from some general dust and malaise, it looks pretty intact, so I'm just going to go ahead and unplug everything, and then we'll have a closer look. Not much to it, is there, a Famicom? And if I'm not mistaken, Famicoms had better sound hardware than a NES. So this has even extra stuff that you wouldn't have on a NES. But let's start with the power supply modulator area. So there's your modulator. It's under this whole circuitry actually here. It's not a discrete cam like you often see in the uh, Western microcomputers, which we're using the Aztec type module. You have voltage regulation here going on, and it appears to be a 7805, so a 5 volt regulator, and it's using this whole can and a little additional heatsink, all this heat sinking. There's your power in, so you could work out your polarity if you needed to from that. It's a little bit crusty, but otherwise looking good. In fact, all of this looks actually okay, apart from a bit of dust and a little bit of surface rust, I think we're going to be okay with those. And then you have this wire here, which goes off to the switch that's on the top of the case, and that's the power switch. So all power is controlled from here. And all you're going to get down these wires, effectively, a couple of them are going to be power. And the rest of them are going to be video and sound. In fact, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what could you have? RGB, <laughs> RGB, audio ground, audio, five volts, and voltage ground. It could be something like that. And in fact, when I flip it over, he says. <laughs> it does have markings on it. So let's see those markings here. So you have, it says ground, VCC, two lines for that, B plus, whatever B plus is, A, maybe audio, G for ground, and V for video. So, hmm, it's, well, that would mean it's probably a component video. Oh, sorry, a composite video. If it is, that's really interesting because it means you could bypass this regulation and make a composite output on it. Interesting, something to think about in the future when we start trying to get this board brought up. Now let's have a look at the chips on there. And now I'm not gonna be particularly good at guessing chips. So let's see if the board tells us what we need to know. In fact, it does a little bit. It says here, 2K times eight SRAM, great. And then it's head here, this is the 74HC737. So what is that? Just some sort of a logic chip. And then another SRAM chip right here. And then moving down, we have this RP2CO2G, then an RPA03G. So those probably team up together to do a bunch of the custom stuff. I'm just checking that down here if there's any indication of what could be a CPU chip. And I don't think they have a CPU chip vibe on them. So these probably in parallel. Ah, in fact, here we go, CPU, it does say it right there. A CPU and a PPU. So this would be the actual CPU chip, and this is be PPU. Would that be peripheral something in it? Yeah, so maybe this is the uh, control for the, um, takes the inputs and outputs and does a bunch of stuff, maybe sound, and this is just an actual CPU. Ah. Does it really matter now at this point? It just, hopefully that we can get it working. So let's have a look inside that RAM unit for the disk drive. Here we have the family computer disk system HVC023 module. 
and you can see here it says RAM. So that's what this has in it. Just additional RAM, the RAM adapter. It adapts to the Famicom disk drive but holds additional RAM. Probably to take the program from the disk and store it in here actually, the same way a cartridge was. It's sort of emulating a ROM perhaps. Now I've already unscrewed it so yeah that makes life a lot simpler. Wow! Now it has been decades since I opened up one of these and I do remember opening up the one I had and that would be oh, maybe 30 years ago now. So <laughs> that is bonkers isn't it to think that. And you can see there's your, your, your chips in here. There's not too much going on. It doesn't seem to be marked as nicely as the other units. We're going to have to guess. But we do see here... Hmm, SRAM, there you go, the SRAM 8K times 8. So that's a 64 kilobit, I think, memory, if I'm if my maths are correct. Which is a fairly old big chunk though, isn't it really, for something like this? And um, we have a really nice strain relief here on this. I could, I'm actually incredibly impressed by that crimped on strain relief. And then you have another custom chip, this RP2C33A. Um there are some markings here though, there are some resistor packs here, 4.7k times 8. They are marking certain things, 21 megahertz crystal here at the top. Then if we shift down underneath here you can see there's a sharp chip. Um, I don't know if it's 8651 or the LH2833, whichever is important. When you search you'll find that one. And then HD1 4069 UBP and that is all she wrote and that is the cartridge adapter right there look at that it's a beautiful work of art there and that's all it is it's going to have its own logic in here I think if you have this plugged in if you have this plugged in without the disk drive I think you still got it booted up into something so some of that is a ROM I mean it could be one of these could be actually a bit of ROM here which contains the programming this has it definitely had certain functionality and I'm sure it helps facilitate the file loading and saving so there could be a little bit of a API type affair going on here on interface to that disk drive HVC FMR 04 1986 oh boy I feel old <laughs> Comments down below. Uh, stay tuned in the future where we start playing a little bit more with these. And as ever, thank you for watching.